Okay, today we're looking at a set of FE heads that I'm getting ready to do some work on. Uh, grade the valves, hardened seats and all. But when I was pulling them off the old motor, I broke three studs on this head. I also broke three studs, or well, four studs on the other head, but I was able to get one of them out just with the power pliers. The other three I had to take out the same way I'm fixing to do this, which kind of hard to tell, but I'm set up on my old drill press, which works for these heads because they're flat, parallel flat to their self on each side, the intake side and the exhaust side. With that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using some drill bits, a hammer and a center punch. A little die grinder with sanding wheel on it to level the bolts out better. I will be also using a tap and die once I get to that point. These are threaded for 3816. So you use a 5 16 drill bit, will be my final drill bit. Right now I have a chamfer tool in here because the last one I did I needed a chamfer to get the drill, uh, to get the tap started better. So I'm going to cut you off for a minute and start getting everything set up and I will show you some of the processes as I go. And try to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Okay, I'm starting right now. I'm going to send this one down. Level. Oh, there you go, I didn't cut the air compressor on. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go again with the air compressor on. Gonna send this flat. And I always remember, which I didn't do, to wear your safety glasses. Now, hammer, center punch. Line it up on the center the best you can. It helps if it's perfectly flat. Okay. That appears to be centered pretty well. I don't know if you can see the little dimple in the middle is what I was doing. Now I'm going to get the right drill bit that I'm going to start using to get it in the drill chuck. This happens to be a drill bit I was using earlier and I actually broke, but it still does a job. Because all it is is a guide hole for the next size up. Now we'll get the head over here. So get it set up where I can get the drill to go through it. And line up. Okay, that appears to be pretty pretty close to my center punch. Put my safety glasses back on this time. Okay. Checking to make sure it's where I want it. I'm going to use a little oil to help keep from burning up the drill bit.
Okay. Didn't go all the way through, but it doesn't have to because I'm stepping up in sizes. So I know this watching somebody drill can be boring, so I'm going to cut you off and I will come back when I finish up with the last drill bit. Okay, we're back for a minute. As you can see, you've got to make sure you stay on center. And so where this bolt is ended up off to one side. And where this one's not quite center, but it's still good enough to do the job I need to do. So, I'll be able to drill this one completely out like I want and re-tap it. This one, I'm going to have to figure something else out. When I get to that point, at the end I'll show you how to do it. Now let me get on to drilling out the rest of these. Okay, I'm back. Got the whole chamfer ready to start tapping. Let me get you set up and well, we can view it and I will get, uh, get to tapping. Always use a little cutting oil when you're tapping. Today I'm just using regular old motor oil. And remember as you tap, take your time, make sure you tap straight. If it starts to bind back up and clear the threads out a little bit. Definitely do not want to break a tap off. Now this type, these holes go all the way through, they don't bottom out, so. Once I get it through, I just back it back out. And there's one bolt extract or drilled out and, re and uh, cleaned out where I can start using the bolts again when I get the heads redone. Okay, we're back. As you can see, I was able to drill and tap all three of the holes. The one that I've I drilled off center, I just ended up re-drilling. I also did another item while I was tapping it. As you can see, there's a broke tap in there. What I did is took a, a punch and a hammer and just kept tapping on these flutes. These flutes until I was able to get it to back back out. So now I will be able to, re, uh, to use this head. The next step will be, they'll be going to a local machine shop to be cleaned up and checked to make sure they can be reworked. No cracks, no anything that wouldn't be able to make them not used again. Basically no cracks. These heads are the early versions. They do not have hardened seats in them. So, that will be one thing that will get added after, when I get them redone. I have some other plans along with that. Uh, new valve guides, new, new valves. It's going to have to have different springs for the cams. I'm going to run the cam. I'm going to run in the truck. So as I go further along, I will bring you more, uh, more with these heads. There's going to be some mild pocket porting done and a little bit of cleaning up just to help the flood. And there are other ways I could have got these out. One of, the, one of the ways is to use a welder and a nut and weld it to the bolt. Well, I did try that on the first head and they just kept popping right off. That's why I went ahead and did this. Now the welding with a, welding the bolt, a nut on the bolt, broke bolt, works very well. I've done it with other, other bolts that I've broken in the past. It just wasn't gonna work on this setup. I've also run the tap through the other holes in the head to Clean the, clean the threads out. That way I make sure there's no trash in them. After they're uh, been hot tight, cleaned, and before final assembly, I will go back through them all again with the tap. I know there's probably things I missed. I know everybody's gonna have better suggestions on how to do this. 
So if you got a better suggestion, a better way, let me know. I'm still learning. Uh, and as far as this video goes, this is my first video I've ever done. Well, second video. First how-to video. And as you can see, I will centered it just like I said not to do. I broke the tap just like I said to watch out for. So, I'm going to show you everything I do when I make these videos. Whether they're right, wrong, or completely stupid. Lord knows I'm good at that one. So, thank you for watching CC's Garage. Until the next time, cheers. Okay, I got these heads to the machine shop the other day, and the guy looked at them. When he looked at them, we went through and fixed, and it's kind of hard to see, but on one or two of these seats, there is, it, it's beveled in. So, he was telling me, which I already knew there's going to have to have hardened seats, and even the intakes have sunk a little bit. Uh, these heads never had hardened seats. They were unleaded gas heads. But by the, he said by the time I bought new valves, put the hardened seats in, and did everything I wanted to, guides and all, I'd be looking at $1,200 to do these heads if, to minimum, if they didn't find anything else wrong. And on the exhaust side here, and I grabbed the wrong one, but well, you can kind of see here how, how pity it is. He said by the time some of them on the other had a special cleaned up, it was probably going to make this wire right here so thin that it wasn't going to be any, do any good. He said my best bet was just to go ahead and order another set of heads. Well, I come home, got online. Anybody that's been messing with these know that right now you can almost not get any kind of performance parts. Well, I've been lucky lately. I got on eBay and found a set of heads in stock for this truck. Let me get the camera set down here and we'll go ahead and open the box. And the weird thing is, I ordered these two days ago. And they're already here from Kansas. Which in itself is unusual. I've got to give my hat to top FedEx for this one. Now, as everything, I am not sponsored for any of these videos. If I buy something, it's because either A, I've used it before and like it, or B, I've seen good reviews on it. And I'm not saying that because I use it, anybody else has to. It just happens to be what I like. this box and as you can see they are elder brock oh shoot well i thought i could hold a camera let me set you back down for a minute these staples holding the box shut make it a little hard. These heads are very well packaged and I like how they use the cardboard instead of the styrofoam for a change. These heads are set up for a well, let me turn back on this. I have a cardboard was sitting in like this to, to save it. I didn't realize I had the camera to wrong angle. These heads are set up for a hydraulic flat tap at camp. 209-160 valves. As you can see, Elbrock Performer RPMs. I'm running a set of these same heads on a 93 Mustang I have with a 331 stroker in it. I've also got the Elbrock Pro Flow system on that Mustang. Well, when these heads go on the car, it's also getting the Elbrock Pro Flow 4. 
So I'll be doing this in the next couple of videos. Um, but for the money over 1200 I ended up with over 2100 buying the, the, this setup. But then again, they're new. I don't have to have a valve job. Everything's good to go. Now to a later date when I decide to go to a roller cam and rebuild the bottom end, I will have to change these valve springs. No big deal. This will get me up, get me running, get my burnt valve problem fixed on the truck. And I can go ahead and do it at the same time I do my Holy uh, Pro Flow 4. So I appreciate you watching. I've already got the next video. Well, the next video in the works. Uh, so we'll be seeing, you'll be seeing that next. Well, thank you for watching CC's Garage. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Thank you. Have a good day.